Hello, and welcome back to the Reiki Gem Wellness Channel for these episodes that I call Let's Talk Crystals. If you are really interested in how crystals and gemstones can help support you in your everyday life situations, then this channel is for you. And if you're brand new to this channel, my name is Shannon and I'm a certified Reiki master and teacher and a certified gemologist. And I combine those skills and passions to provide you with the knowledge, the tools, and the opportunities to practice incorporating crystal wisdom into your everyday life. And these episodes, Let's Talk Crystals, are just an opportunity for me to talk to you about the nuts and bolts, the nitty gritty about how to work with gemstones in your life. These are unscripted, mostly unedited videos. Um, today I'm suffering from allergies, so if you see some edit points, it's probably because I'm sneezing. So, and these are much more casual episodes. So yeah, if you see pauses like that, moments when I'm thinking, it's because I haven't pre-written a script. This is just more conversational, more chatty. So after that really long intro into this video, let's get into it. So the first part of the video is to talk about how I have used crystals and gemstones in my everyday life. And the second part is to answer some of your most common questions. And this week, um, it's, it was Halloween week. So I do film these a week ahead of time. So events that I talk about might be well past the date. So it was Halloween this year. Holidays are changing in 2020 with the pandemic and lockdowns and quarantines. And we're not able to be with our friends and family like we normally would during holidays. Halloween is a time that got ourselves and our kids out to have parties with friends, to go trick-or-treating, to go to fun festive events and, and fall celebrations. It just really wasn't possible this year. But we still wanted to make it special. So the gemstone that helped me, and we just learned about it this past week, is strawberry quartz. This is the stone of pure joy and it helps us remember and take time for those special moments and milestones in our lives. And, and Halloween was one. So we had some fun times planned for our kids. We did take some time to have a whole day of just fun and enjoyment. It was just our family and we didn't go anywhere, but we still did get dressed up, all of us, and we still did enjoy cooking and candy and fun stuff. So if you are feeling a little down about the holidays this year, then I suggest getting some strawberry quartz to help you take time to celebrate anyway, especially this year, especially we need it even more this year. I have had allergies this week. It's really bad in the fall and in the spring for me and I've been taking allergy medicine, but it was a time to remind myself to get a little bit more sleep, to remember to take that medicine, to really take care of myself, to, to drink tea when I needed it, to be a little bit more hydrated. And Moonstone helps to encourage and support nurturing, self-care, taking care of ourselves when we're starting to feel a little physically worn out, Moonstone helps. And, you know, it reminds us to take time, to carve time out, to do those things that really nurture us and help us feel a little more comfortable. Ah. Uh, um, another gemstone I worked with this week was Lepidolite because as I'm filming this, the election hasn't happened yet. <laughs> um, 
And, you know, there's some anxiety, a little bit of stress that I'm feeling for that, for that event. And at the time that this is published, I don't know how I'm going to be feeling, but sitting with Lipidolite just helps to dissolve a little bit of that anxiety and just send it back out to the earth where the earth will accept it and dissolve that, neutralize that anxiety. And then finally is um, fire quartz because I have been writing, writing, writing and I really just need that fire. Fire quartz is the stone of clear focus and helps me sit down when I need to and really formulate a clear message. And you know, the fiery part of it ties into our sacral chakra and really helps boost that creativity and the clear quartz of it helps us amplify those energies and, and just really focus. And these fiery parts are inclusions of hematite in it. And hematite is the stone of the mind. And, you know, even though a hematite appears kind of chrome-like or black in appearance, it's actually red, a very, very deep red, which is why these flames in fire quartz look red. So I really, there were times when I needed to have that spark and really focus. And then there are times this week when I just needed to relax and let some of that go. So, you know, there's a balance in our lives that sometimes we need to be energetic and sometimes we need to relax and take care of ourselves. And, and knowing when each of those things is appropriate you know, take some awareness, just watching ourselves, how our bodies and our emotions and mind are feeling and just determining what I need, what do I need right now? What do I really need right now? And being present and mindful and just aware of our inner experience and our physical experience is a really vital skill in life. So that was my week. <laughs> I'm really, really interested to see how I'll feel next week when I'm filming. But the question that I'm going to be talking about today is about toxic gemstones. So last week we talked about any energetically negative gemstones and I did bring up toxic gemstones a little bit. And then this is the video that I'm dedicating to that. However, what I'm not going to be doing is giving you a list of all of the top toxic gemstones because there are a lot of them. There are a lot of them. And I really suggest that you Google because it's, it's easy to find. There is a, a common list going around of about 50 gemstones that have some sort of toxicity about them. But I am going to point out a, a couple of common ones that you'll run across in gemstone stores that you should just take a little extra precaution with and then talk about working with gemstones with toxicity in mind in general terms. So a couple that come to mind right off the bat is a galena because it has a really high lead concentration malachite because it has a really high copper concentration and bumblebee jasper uh, because it's still debated but it is supposed to have a fair amount of arsenic in it as well best practices for working with gemstones. If you are handling your gemstones a lot, like if you are sitting and meditating with them and holding them, it is a general best practice to wash your hands afterwards because there are so many gemstones there that are touched with 
copper, aluminum, arsenic, asbestos, that washing your hands after you handle your gemstones is a good common practice. Another point, most of them are listed as potentially toxic, but aren't really toxic for you to hold them. They're more dangerous if you cut or carve gemstones because that, even though those are cut and carved using often a wet process, it does release those particles into the air, which you can breathe in. So if you do cut or carve gemstones, it's a good idea to become really familiar with the list of toxic gemstones to know how you could, should best handle them in general. Finally, crystal elixirs which is the practice of putting gemstones in water, letting them soak and absorb the crystal energy, and then drinking it. I do not recommend this at all. I just don't because most of these toxic gemstones are pretty benign to handle, but once you put them in water and drink them, especially if you're doing it on a regular basis, can really have dangerous effects on your health. What I do recommend is that there are water bottles that have pockets on the bottom that you can place gemstones in and then um, tighten a cap over it. So you would flip over the water bottle, unscrew the cap, put your gemstones in, screw it back up, and then fill it with water. And the water and the gemstones are clearly separated. Those are fine. If you want to infuse your uh, waters with the energy of gemstones, but I highly recommend you do not just put gemstones directly in water. There is just too much risk with that. So just to summarize, one, you can find a list of potentially toxic gemstones everywhere on the internet. Two, wash your hands. And I think in 2020, that's kind of a common practice right now anyway. Uh, three, don't put gemstones directly in water. And four, if you cut or carve gemstones, just really do your homework before you start working with them. So I hope that this was useful. This is a question I get often. I have tumbled and polished gemstones. And many of these have some toxicity warnings like lapis and malachite and some of these other stones. And I've not had any physical problems with tumbling, but the tumbling happens in water. And then I wash all of that slurry off and I'm not breathing any dust of the gemstones. So if you do tumble gemstones. I haven't had any issues, but then you're constantly essentially washing your hands during the tumbling process as well. So thank you so much for joining me today to hear me talk about my week and to talk about ge toxic gemstones. I hope that, sorry for that clap, um, if you're wearing headphones. I hope that you're having a really good week. I really wish you the best this week. And I am sending you light and love for the holiday season that we're going into. So have a great week and I will see you again during the video tomorrow.